Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Welcome to part four of our visit with Don Copa of Little Falls, Minnesota, where Don continues showing us some of the equipment he's collected over the years. I told the kids, I don't know what they'd do with it after I'm gone. I don't care, it's up to them, but I said I sure had fun collecting it. It's a McCormick number five. Needs new uh, wooden boxings put in it. I got the material for them, but I just haven't Oh, okay. Haven't got them in yet. That's pretty much the only piece of wood that's on it, isn't it? Yep. Uh, and the two center ones are pretty much gone. Well, the back one is totally gone. But right. So that one won't be on the in the field there. Boy, that's a pretty piece of machinery, isn't it? That's um, wow. That's another little problem. These I started loosening up already. Some of them are pretty tight. Put, others, put, yeah. put some heat on them and I was working pretty diligently on it. And then I said, I got to quit on this. I got to get going out there. This one's, I got two more one horse mores. So this one I just picked up. The price was right. So I thought I could fix her up and make it work. Is this McCormick? This is a champion, draw cut champion. Huh. And you've got two others, you said? Yeah, I got a McCormick and a David Bradley. Wow. So this gets pulled with a, a horse and shafts? One horse and shafts, right. Huh. This is a Chattanooga twin disc. I picked this one up, it wasn't complete, so I'm looking for parts for it. I wanted to get this one going too for the field day, but too many irons in the fire. Drop one disc or the other one, all depends which way you're going. Otherwise you come across the field, pick the plow up, swing the team around on here, and head right back in the same furrow. Huh. So you hook on either end? No, you hook. Well, the hitch would come out here, okay. to about here. Okay. And when you get raise the plow up to go back across the field, trip to trip here, and then the swing in the team around, wow. and it locks in and you drop the other disc. I've never seen that. Head back in the other direction. Yeah, right. Get to the end, do it all over again. I mean, that's fairly rare, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, I mean, I've seen disc plows, but I don't think I've ever seen one that's like a hillside plow. That's that's mm -hmm. two-way, I guess. Two-way plow, yes. Yeah. You'll see a few of them out there. Huh. Chattanooga F50 reversible. That is a nice piece. There's some iron in there, isn't there? That's pretty heavy. Yeah, yes. I bet it is. It, it go down on the ground. This is one of the walk behind. Just in case you're wondering, the kids told me to write on some of this stuff what it is because when I'm gone, they'll have no idea. But you'll notice that quite a few of the pieces out there have uh, writing smart. on it. That's smart of them to ask for that. Yeah. The, another thing I'll tell you is uh, all this stuff came with wooden poles, but a lot of it stands outside here, so. I changed to steel, but now steel's getting pretty spendy. It sure is, yeah, it sure is. So this is a walk-behind cultivator. Walk-behind cultivator. It should have two handles put on it. Wood, of course, but I was looking for the right set of steel handles to put on it so the handles won't 
rot away. And this is to guard the corn? Yes. To push the corn out of the way? Yeah. Corn row is between. You can set them over here, in or out. All depends where you want them. I see. Yeah. But it's a pretty old piece that. I won't, I won't use this one much, I can guarantee it, because you got to walk behind it. <laughs> this isn't going to snap. Uh, this is an Avery knocker, it's called, used for spreading fertilizer. Okay. But in the day, they used uh, guana bat manure. Sure, right, right. And uh, anyhow, when I take it someplace, I'll fill it up with sawdust and it spreads good. But uh, they call it a knocker because it does it actually knock? Yes, when it runs? Do you want me to hold it. Hold it. We'll see if I can't get it. To, yep. <laughs> but anyhow, that's the. It looks like they replaced the box on it. I had to redo the box. Yeah, that's, uh, that's in great shape. I didn't want to put this out there yet because of the do and stuff. So I'll put this out. And you can adjust your flow. That's why it ain't knocking. Terrific. What a simple design. That simple wooden design. wheel is great. You can adjust your the oh, yeah. mount coming out by yeah. sliding that up and down. It's nothing fancy, but I bet it's nothing. Great. <laughs> International corn binder. Uh, got the bundle carrier on it and I put a truck on it. For the field day mainly, uh, I've got a straight pole for this outfit, but I just don't trust it. It's a wooden pole, and uh, I don't know how many years old that pole is. It looks like new. I don't want to. So I put the truck on it for the field day. Uh, this corn binder used to belong to my father-in-law. It was out in the pasture for many years. And I brought it home and uh, started on it one in the winter. Took it all the way down to the bottom and rebuilt it completely. Put a new sickle, new plates, all new boards. Uh, That's a lot of work. Interesting little project. Works good? Works good. Wow. Uh, Mel came over and we tried it here about a week ago, week and a half. And because uh, I wanted to know if the knotter was going to tire. Sure. Never missed a bundle. Wow, that is terrific. That's a bonus, I thought. Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll probably cut some on Saturday with it. I don't know how much, but here we've got a Hoover potato planter sold by John Deere. But other than that, it's made of steel. Uh, got a good steel box on it. Uh, you get to watch the travel of the potato pretty clearly when you're all running. the way. Yeah, it's all right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a marker on behind. Just switch it from side to side. When you're headed home, put it in the middle position. Travel mode. One thing I don't like about this Hoover potato planter, unless you got your box full of potatoes, it's back heavy. Oh yeah. So you sit on it and it'll tip backwards. Sure. Yeah. And I never never had the ambition to plant that whole box full of potatoes. So. I usually, I've got to wait 
in the shed at home and uh, put it on the front of the pole to well, compensate. Even if you fill it with potatoes, you're still, I mean, you're going to empty it. Sooner or later, it's going to empty up. But otherwise, it's a good working planter. Uh, this in particular one came from back home. Dad used to plant a lot of potatoes, but he cut the pole off and hooked it to the tractor so he didn't have that problem with it. Right. Which happened to most planters, I guess. Yes, sir. This is an international digger. Uh, road rings. Nice item to have if you're traveling around to and from the field. Uh, I don't bother taking them off when I dig potatoes because the, it'll, they'll go deep enough into the, the dirt that uh, they'll pull. Uh, interesting story, middle of winter I seen this, not this in particular digger advertised up in Duluth, Minnesota, but I seen it had road rings on it. So away I went brought it home with me, took the road rings off of that one and put them on this one. <laughs> this one's got the uh, rod shaker in the back. Oh, yeah. A little different than the apron chain. Right. Uh, it just wiggles back and forth. Wiggles back and forth, yeah. Shakes the dirt out. Uh, and these are for? Vines to go off to the side, trash that comes out. Okay. Potatoes supposedly should be coming down here. Sure. Okay. Uh, again, this is for keeping the trash moving. Because uh -huh. the weedier the potatoes are, the more trash you're going to get. Uh, sure. This fine piece of equipment here, this is the second one I've seen like this. Uh, Dolman, Dolman potato bagger. They were made in Gandy, Minnesota. That's over by Cambridge. Uh, about 1924, 25 in there, they started making these. The, a farmer used to hire kids for a buck and a half a day to pick potatoes and he thought that was too hard of work on them so he started uh, designing and building a potato sacker. Uh, the name is still, they got potato equipment today, but he started out building on the farm. I think he built 14 the first year and 40 some the second year, and then he bought a factory and he built 300 the following year, and then it just kept going from there. Wow. Uh, There's somebody to stand on each side in the front. Okay. And picking trash out. Okay. And you hope he don't lose his fingers in the process. Right. Back here you got a couple bags hanging. And as one, one sack gets full, you switch it over to the other side and then you can change the sack, set it off on the side and they'll come and pick it up with a box later. You've got sacks hanging here. That should be a box there with sacks in it. Yep. I mean this is a nice safety feature to keep the guy from falling into the wheel. Yes. Uh, this is uh, one of the earlier models. The first pictures I've seen of this thing, they didn't have this on it. They were uh, hard to find literature on this thing. Uh, it hitches underneath the huh. digger. Yeah. I made one set of brackets and went to put it in gear. And without testing this beforehand, this piece right here goes out of the hub instead of in the hub. Okay. So I threw those on the brush pile and started over again. <laughs> but I, I think I got her this time because there's no pictures or nothing that show you how to hook it on. Sure, right. And you gotta be so close 
but you got to be far enough so when you turn it don't hit. Yeah, right, right. But I haven't tried, just pulled it around a little bit. We haven't dug potatoes, but we're going to try her. This is a unique little champion digger. Uh, works really good for two horses. It pulls easy. Uh, was patented in 1906. Uh, I've had this one for quite a while. Just a pretty simple. The only drawback is you don't want to put it down too deep because it'll unhook for you when you're sure. when you start to roll. Sure. I was going to manufacture a little bracket on there so it wouldn't unhook by itself. But it's a nice little truck. Little truck. It's kind of a downsize version. Yeah. Potato planter. E and B. Emerson Breitningham. This planter is unique because it's got different settings as to how many, how thick you want your potatoes planted. I think it goes by pecs, I'm not sure, but. Huh. What else can I say about it? It's got a metal box on it, that's a good, that's a bonus. Uh, what do you use when you plant your potatoes? That one. That's the last one I got, so I've been trying that one. And it's this, got it's got yeah. a canvas box on it. This is an aspen wall. They were a little later uh, version of a, of a potato planter, shall I say? Uh, got this on there just in case it rained. Ah. But it's got canvas bags. Yeah. The bags were all shot, but I took the thing over to the Amish and they sewed me up some bags. They work really well. Uh, pretty simple. They're ready to plant. Nice thing about this one, you look down here between and you can see if the potatoes are on the picks here. So you can see if it's planting or if our potatoes are hung up in that sack someplace yep. or yep. so is it always in gear and that no so that puts it in gear that puts it in gear when you when yep. you move that business got a marker got to switch the marker when you from side to side wooden pole so it's got to stay in If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $4.95. $44.95 or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. The rural American countryside is still filled with historic old barns built a century or more ago, but they won't be standing forever. To commemorate and capture the images and stories of the old barns, Ohio native Bob Kruger began painting and writing their histories, and that's all come together in a new book called Historic Barns of Ohio. You can get your copy by calling 877-647-2452 or visiting ruralheritage.com. It costs just $23.99 plus $7 shipping. Call 877-647-2452. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3000.
3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.